by the end of this video, you should be able to calculate evaporation with a different tool. It's called the aerodynamic method. And as you can guess, based on just the name, it's all about the wind. So I have up in the right hand side here, oh boy, it's windy. We're going to use the same values in the same place of Phoenix. So we're going to calculate the evaporation over this proposed reservoir in Phoenix due to the wind instead of due to the sun, which is what we did in the last video about the, uh, sorry, the energy balance method. So the aerodynamic method has uh, a relatively simple equation at its, at its root. And so the rate of evaporation in this one is called big E sub A. And uh, uh, big E sub A is B bracket E sub A S minus E sub A. And I'm gonna define what each of these variables are and how to calculate it in uh, the equation. But first, just to start, this is where we're, what we're aiming for, the, the rate of evaporation. B is um, the vapor transfer coefficient. So that's the coefficient of how easily vapor is transferred. So the vapor transfer coefficient, and we'll calculate that in a minute. E sub a s, small e sub a s, is the saturation vapor pressure. And E sub a is the actual vapor pressure. So we're going to calculate all three of those, but as a little bit more of a, a background on this methodology, I want to describe where some of the data comes from. So we measure wind uh, normally in a, in a, at a meteorological station, which often is about two meters off the ground. So if you, if you want to imagine in your mind, we have the land surface, so I'll just put a little tree here, maybe I should make it green. And beside that tree, uh, we have a little wind tower, meteorological station. I guess that's a pretty small tree. Because what this elevation typically is, is two meters. So the elevation that the wind is measured at is often two meters. And this, in this example, where it's all about the wind, it, we're, what we're trying to estimate actually is the rate of evaporation from a reservoir from a lake. So we're trying to calculate this, um, and this is the E, big E sub A. And on that um, water body, there are, are small little ripples. Um, and those ripples are what is in the aerodynamic method um, called Z sub O, Z, Z sub zero. A typical value for Z sub zero is um, 0 0.03 centimeters. Another, and that's what we'll use uh, in, in this problem. And sometimes it, it varies. Uh, this, second, this second height here is just called um, uh, Z, it's called Z2. And so this Z2 is two meters. So we have Z2, Z0 or Z0. And then we have the wind, which is blowing across this two meter height interval. And this is called U2. So we have the wind velocity at a certain height and the ripples in the reservoir. So these are like three kind of important variables for this method called the aerodynamic method. So let's come back and uh, first solve for this vapor transfer coefficient. Here we have uh, big B, and big B is equal to 0.12 U2, and this is not the band, uh, this is the wind velocity from over there, uh, bracket long uh, Z2 over Z0, all within the bracket squared. And so we just substitute our values in uh, from what we know about Phoenix and what we know uh, from the drawing over there. And so those uh, values are 0 0.12 times the U2 velocity 
of 0 0.7 meters per second, all divided by square bracket ln 2 meters or 200 centimeters divided by 200 centimeters divided by 2, two meters, 0 0.03 centimeters, all squared. And what that results in is a, a B equal to 9.21 times 10 to the 4, sorry, 10 to the negative 4 millimeters per day Pascal. So we have our vapor transfer coefficient. The next thing we want to calculate is our um, saturation vapor pressure. So if you remember the uh, vapor pressure curve, this is uh, the, where we are at a certain temperature on that curve uh, for we're moving between saturated and unsaturated. So that is um, E, small e, sub AS. And um, this is a hyperbolic function that's temperature dependent. Uh, and so that comes out in this equation here of six point uh, or sorry, 611 to the exponent, everything here uh, is in brackets, 17.27 T, where T is uh, the temperature uh, in degrees Celsius, all over 237.3 plus T. And I've had students ask before, this is not a mistake, uh, this being uh, uh, a switch for Kelvin, this is the correct um, unit conversion um, for degrees Celsius for this problem. So here again, we substitute in uh, 21 degrees um, C and we re the resultant E sub AS is 2487.8 Pascals. That's our second variable in this calculation. The third variable is uh, vapor pressure. And vapor pressure is a function of the relative humidity. So um, small e sub a is the relative uh, humidity multiplied by uh, the satur saturation vapor pressure, is e sub a s. And so um, uh, the relative humidity long-term average for Phoenix is 20%, so 0.2 times this 2,487.8 pascals. So our vapor pressure, our E of A, is 497.5 pascals. So then just to bring it all together, we can calculate our, our aerodynamic uh, method for evaporation of EA is uh, equal to 9.21 times 10 to the negative four millimeters per day Pascal. subtracting in brackets 2,487.8 pascals minus 497.5 pascals. And then the final answer is, um, and after the unit um, conversion, is 1.83 millimeters per day. So now we've calculated the rate of evaporation from a reservoir in Phoenix using the aerodynamic method and the energy balance method, so the wind and the sun, to uh, think about the two fundamental elements of uh, uh, Aristotle. And now we're gonna combine these in the next method in a method not surprisingly called the combined method.